Hello, grade 11s. We know that in the 17th century, scientists had two main theories of light. These were their ideas about what light really is and how it travels. Newton believed that light travels as a stream of particles, and Huygens thought that light travels as a wave. Huygens studied water waves, and he explained that light behaves as a wave. He could not say what the light wave travels in. In other words, he could not say what the medium of a light wave is, but he used water waves as his model of light. Thomas Young, in 1801, did a crucial experiment with light that came through two slits and hit a white screen. You would expect that he saw two bright lines on the screen. Instead, he saw a row of bright and dark lines on the screen. Young decided that Huygens' wave theory of light was the only one that could explain the results he saw. Huygens knew that water waves can interfere with each other when they cross over each other. In some places, crests occur at the same time and they make a double height crest. Or troughs occur at the same time and we get a double deep trough. We say that they interfere constructively and we get a bigger amplitude. This is called constructive interference. At other places, crests meet troughs and the water just flattens out at those places. In other words, the wave amplitude is zero. We say they interfere destructively and we get a zero amplitude. Look at this computer simulation of two waves from two point sources. The two red squares on the left are two sources of waves. The line on the right is the screen. As the waves cross each other, crests meet troughs at certain places and cancel each other's amplitudes. These places line up, and we find these nodal lines where the amplitude is zero. At other places, crests meet crests, or troughs meet troughs, and they double the amplitude. These places line up, and we find these antinodal lines, where the amplitude is a maximum. As the waves travel forward and hit a screen, we can see these places with greater amplitude and zero amplitude. Even though we must use water waves to demonstrate interference like this, the pattern on the screen is like the pattern Young saw on his screen, and so scientists feel that this is strong evidence that Huygens was correct. Light does travel as a wave. Huygens went further to describe how a wave travels. Let's see what Huygens said back in the 1600s. Imagine a wave of the sea coming towards the beach. The whole length of the wave is called a wavefront. Huygens said you can think of every point on a wave as a source of more little waves. Each point in the wave makes wavelets, and we know that the waves from a single point on water are circular. The secondary wavelets spread out in the forward direction and the fronts of all these new waves together form a line that is the new wavefront. All the points on a wavefront are at a crest at the same time, or in a trough at the same time. We say that they are in phase. That is a mouthful. Let us go through it with the aid of a diagram. Here is a wavefront coming from the green bar on the left side. The bright blue lines are the crests of a straight wave. You can see the crest rise and then fall and fade as they become troughs. Here you see the wave rise again and become a crest. Now this crest must advance the wave to the right. How does it do that? Imagine four points in the wavefront, and each point makes a circular wavelet that spreads out in all directions. The fronts of the circular wavelets are like a new straight wave front. We can draw this white line as a tangent to all the circles. This white line represents the new wavefront. To get the tangential surface, we draw a line across all the little wavefronts. That means a straight wave front travels forward as a straight wave front. So a straight wave front has many points that make little waves that form another straight wave front. To show the direction that the wave moves, we draw an arrow. The arrow is perpendicular to the wave front. Arrows like this are then the rays that you have drawn in ray diagrams when you studied reflection and refraction. The arrow is not the wave. 
The arrow is the direction of the wave. The great scientist Isaac Newton believed that light must be a stream of fast-moving particles. Like bullets, he said particles don't change direction to go around corners. But Newton knew that shadows don't have sharp edges, and that meant that some light does actually go around corners. Newton could not explain this. On the other hand, Huygens' principle helps us understand how light can bend around an edge. Let's draw wavefronts using Huygens' principle. The vertical white lines are wavefronts approaching the thick black barrier, here from the left. The black arrows are the rays that you have become used to drawing in ray diagrams. At the edge of the barrier, says Huygens, there's a point in the medium here that will generate secondary waves and they will be circular. Now the white circular wave fronts travel outward like this from the edge. And the black arrows show the direction in which they travel. So waves can bend their direction to go around corners and edges. This bending around an edge is called diffraction. The edge of the obstruction and all the points next to it act as sources of little circular waves called wavelets. These waves have crests and troughs and at certain points interference constructively and at other points destructively. On the simulation, look for the nodal lines that spread out to left and right from the edges of the obstruction. Now we see what happens if we move the two barriers closer together. There are two edges and diffraction happens at each edge. Straight wave fronts move towards this wide gap between the barriers. As they enter the gap, they don't simply move straight ahead. They spread out to each side. The way that they spread out is by forming new wave fronts that are curved. Notice how the direction of the wave changes at the edges of the barriers. Now let's move the barriers closer together and see what happens. The wave from the left continues entering the gap, but there is less width for it to travel straight ahead. The wave fronts spread out to each side, but as the gap gets smaller, the wave travels on as circular wave fronts. The ability of light to change direction and spread out when it goes through a narrow slit is called diffraction. Only a wave can do this, and so we can be sure that light does travel as a wave. Next time, we will look more closely at what happens as a wave passes through a slit. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also, look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.